Gotta relax. You thought I was a quadriplegic, but I'm really a ninja. With a shotgun in my goddamn wrist. <laughs> Tonight we saw uh, um, a mishmash of tones and uh, other films? quality, <laughs> quality, a mishmash of quality and in inequality. Is that a word? Someone in inequality, the... inequality. There we go. That was one of the themes of this film: the uh, supremacy of the computer race. Reminded me a lot of Metal Gear series. The f name of this film was Upgrade. Upgrade. I was gonna <laughs> say the one with an A that's out, that's a love story, but I couldn't think of the name fast enough. Upgrade, starring that little guy who um, I always mistake for the guy from The Mist, the army guy. <laughs> Thomas Jane? No, Thomas no, Jane. the uh, army guy from The Mist. The main one. He has some romance with the shop girl, but alas, he was in Prometheus. Why don't you tell us his name? Uh, Logan Marshall Green. Hmm. I would have never guessed. I would have guessed something weird. The um, the kid, the dude who put the computer in his neck reminded me of a mix of... I wrote it down just for specificity's sake. He kind of reminded me of um, he Draco me, Malfoy. From, Draco Malfoy from mixed Potter, with the kid yeah. from, who played Green Goblin in The Amazing Spider-Man. The, the second one? Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, the guy who was in Place Beyond the Pines. Yeah, he played Ryan Gosling. He's song. pretty good. Was not that great in um, and Amazing Spider-Man Spider <laughs> that I recall. Yeah, I, I'm blanking on his name, but yeah, he looks like him. That's not him. He's Swedish or something. Um, He's got a yeah. European name, let's say. Yeah, he mm -hmm. looks like a mix of him and Draco Malfoy, whatever that actor's name is. He yeah. was also in Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Maybe not that one, the first one. Anyways, let's talk about this movie. Overall, I'd say. It's going to be rather forgettable. It wasn't action-y enough to carry it through, which was sort of systemic with everything. The ag lead actor wasn't really good enough. He had some good moments where he shined a little bit, but for the most part, he couldn't really carry it. The exploitation part of it, you know, super violence, hyper violence, it was good, but it wasn't, again, there wasn't enough of it Not to carry the film. Not nearly enough of it. Yeah. Especially when there were so many cliche and trope things in it. Yeah, um, it, I, I was pretty excited for this movie when I heard about it, and uh, what about what about uh, it excited you? I see the problem though is the, at the end it really started. I could see the ending coming, but it really started to come. Oh, I, I as soon as this movie started, I knew like everything that was going to happen. Like nothing. Even the final Shyamalan, let's say. Yeah, that that was kind like of obvious. To I, me. It all, there was it all hints kind of to it, so it line. wasn't really too tough um, to figure out. Yeah, but so it's it's very predictable. But see, I when was something's excited. Predictable. That's the thing. When something's predictable, you got to have something to carry it. But please go on. Yeah, I uh, I was expecting it to be just like a really big time action exploitation movie, and it's it's not really. It starts off just really fucking rough. Tor terribly. I it's, wanted her. To, I knew oh, she was going to die immediately, and I, wife, I was praying for it. Like, why are we waiting? Oh my god! Get this shit over with. All of the dialogue with his wife is so fucking cheesy. Terrible. It was the mo it was the cheesiest she, thing I've seen this like, decade. What husband and wife talks like this? Like, no, they don't talk like this to each other. It was, it was like awful. they were reading it off a Hallmark card. It's like baby their dialogue. Talk. Yeah, it was, it was just, rough. It was awful. Um, why don't we make? Why don't we make one? Pizza. Referring to pizza. Why don't we make one? Ooh, that would take too much time. Yeah, and also him starting off just working out his car, like, oh, he's a gearhead. It's like, oh, come on, really? It's a little too much. He was yeah. listening to he's Smokestack. He's analog. He was She's listening to Smokestack you know? Lightning, though. Yeah, which the song I was dope applaud. at the beginning, but... Can you tell me who sings Smokestack no, Lightning? No, no idea. I was like, his I'm name is Howlin' Wolf. Okay. Very, look up... If Definitely you've never it heard of it, listeners, to listen to... Uh, the London Sessions, Howlin' Wolf. He plays with uh, a bunch of really fucking good, big-time fucking musicians, English ones, during the 60s, 70s. I can't remember all their names right now, so I'm not going to give you one or two. Yeah. But, um, 
Yeah, you know, he's analog and and she's, you know, she's all tech savvy. They went they went too far <laughs> into it considering she was going to be gone in 5 minutes anyway. Yeah, they're right? they're like trying to build up some feeling, but you don't give a shit when she gets killed. You're like, "Oh, thank God." You she's wanted to awful. get killed and you know she's going to get killed the yeah, entire she's time. Just, she's just Have awful. you ever seen her in anything? She might Never. She looked a little Never. bit like Emily Rose girl. Not I know it's not her yeah, though. Yeah, she she's a total unknown to me. I've I've never seen her, but um maybe TV. Maybe English TV even. Who knows? Maybe I I'd have to IMDb her and I could really. Do you know less. who directed this? Yeah, uh, Lee Wanell. Uh, I can never say his name Wanell. right. Wanell. Yeah, Lee Wanell. He's Australian, uh, and um, he's been the uh, the main writer for James Wan uh, for a long time. There was a few uh, a few Easter eggs in this one. Let's say. Yeah, uh, he he wrote Saw One. Saw two and saw three. He wrote Death Sentence, which I really love. I think it's on a Death Sentence? Yeah, James Wan directed that. Kevin it's Bacon was in it or something, movie, right? Yeah. He also did Dead Silence, all the Insidious See, I movies. I thought this was going to end up being this movie, Upgrade, was going to be a revenge movie. It kind of was, but it kind of wasn't. It, you know what it, I mean? It Technically, yeah, it is. Technically. But it's just... It's not a very good one. That's the depressing thing. At it's, one point... The first wanna, half an hour. It was just brutal. At one point, one brutal. of the villains says, after uh, our lead does a little, I'm like, I got you and you're fucked speech. And he's, he's like, wow, great speech. I, I believe I laughed or I snickered because I'm like, that was the that was awful. That was, I could have wrote something better and I'm a fucking moron. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, for me, my big sign of See, I'm not it's a bummer. Though. You're just a bummer because you're excited for it. It's a it. bummer. I was like, man, you know, exploitation movie and... The movie has moments, I'll say. It's yeah. got moments where you're like, oh, fuck yeah. And they then could have done just... a lot, lot more with this. Oh, yeah. Especially with them, um, however it all turned out. Yeah. Let's say. Yeah. I, I, the main thing I would say that could have been completely cut out was the uh, the side plot with the cop hunting him down. Yeah, that cut was that. annoying. You could have there cut was, that whole thing right out. Right in the beginning, when he goes back, to, when he first goes to the police station to meet her, he's in his chair. He rolls up, she's looking at him, they show him, and then they go back to her for some reason after the conversation, and she's just, like, looking at the camera and just moves like, that's, like, the kind of editing mistakes I make. <laughs> you guys are professionals here. Yeah. You just forgot um, to clip out that awkward yeah. shot of her just making a weird face. Yeah. Well, uh, whatever. There's a lot of that stuff. A lot of little just awkward dialogue. Awkward you know. not, I don't. I don't want to say the wrong term. Just sort of, they stay on shots, or just Too go long. back to and they cut back to a shot when the conversation's over or the action's over. You know, like there's no point. What I will say about it though is, I think all of the technology stuff was pretty cool. Like it looked good in the movie. Like you know, the Tesla kind of cars. The, um, um, I really liked. See, the problem was they only had one of those car, Tesla cars. This is a low budget movie, but yeah. still, they did a lot with it. I thought. They should have the when they're on the road. They should have had less less other vehicles, because yeah. you'd see the one super cool oh prototype car. Right. Yeah. They're really and then there's the same car. there's a Corolla, a '99 green '99 <laughs> Corolla right next to it. Right. Yeah, they obviously didn't have a budget for like twenty five. Did those you cars. like the um the cop lady cop? No, I wanted her completely cut out of the movie. And uh, I, I mean, what about like her acting stuff? I thought she was terrible. Okay. And I don't like her. She was in Get Out. She played the um the grandma. The maid. Yeah. Well, huh. Spoiler. Um. <laughs> uh, you didn't have to say maid. If you see, it's not a spoiler if one she of us just grandma. answers. Yeah, well, she she was in that, and you know, I, I, she, you didn't like it, so you're obviously gonna dislike her. She's just, you know. she just, there's nothing to her. Like her performance, I just, I don't see anything in her. It was pretty wooden. Um, I didn't hate it or anything. It didn't, I didn't it didn't really it take me out of it or anything. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It was just, she I was, was just the cop. like, this is false tension with her. Yeah. With him hunting, you know, hunt her on his case, and it's like they this should is have definitely, they should have definitely bad. had more with the the tied. Sort of more <clears throat> subtext, sort of more hints at the ending. Not hints at the ending, but sort of more thoughts about it. Maybe a little philosophy about it. Like, I don't know. It reminded me a lot of that movie Ghost in the Shell, too. Not as not as high sci-fi as that, but sort of something in it that happened reminded me of it. Wow. We'll go into it later. Well, he's probably inspired by it in some 
instances. Really you know? Metal Gear Solid. That series really? is what this reminded me a lot That's of. Weird to me. The technology. Well, I never, I haven't beat all of them. I played all of them, but it reminded me of wow. Revengeance, Revengeance. Oh, like Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Yeah. Well, that's basically like the whole thing. Like everybody's updated with, with nano chips and shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. What movies um, did this remind you of? Um, you know, there's definitely shades of Terminator in there for sure. Um, yeah, when you ever, when he first. Uh, Whenever when he first started walking, he had walked like he had a broom up his ass or something. Yeah, robotic and stuff. Yeah, with stem, which is you know kind of stem is the um, the name of the, the operating system. The operating system controlling his bot, the helping to make him not a quadriplegic. Yeah, and it um sort of that's when throws the movie, a mind of its own, I yeah, guess. Th that's when the movie started picking up for me. It's it started really picking boring. Up. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, Something's now we got happened. STEM. Now there's some action. When the when the action starts, I'm like, okay, finally. We're you know, this is moving, there's some yeah. fun. You know, and you know, there's just some great, you know, practical effects and gore. But it, it then it, it slows down enough. again. Yeah. You know, it just it, it didn't it the train derailed. They should have you know what they should have played? Not smokestack. Yeah, smokestack lightning. That's about the train. But um, that's that's basically the sum of this movie. It'll be starts out super cheesy, super bad. Then I it wasn't rocking my socks off, but it was definitely at the polar opposite of where we started. So it was better, you know, in that term. You know how um they say like melting point and the boiling po melting point, and the freezing point's the same or something. It just depends which direction you're going. Okay. Sort of like that. That's how the good parts of this movie felt to me. Except for the extreme gore. A couple of those. Yeah, there's, really there's some really great gore in the movie. Not enough. No, not enough. There's, there's a bunch of deaths. Scenes. There's a bunch of fightings, but only really two, there's two super ultra-violent things. Yeah, I, I, this felt really like a PG-13 movie to me. Minus Earth. those two. Uh, Did yeah, anybody say fuck a lot? No, yeah, you're right. I don't think there was a lot of swearing in it. There wasn't, except for those two, those two deaths. Goons, there wasn't a lot yeah. of gore either, too. Yeah, the, 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 there's two really extreme gore sequences, but then the rest they kind of go CG blood. And I was a lot like, of cutting, oh, man. There was, and, and when there wasn't a lot of cutting, the camera would be shaking or it'd be I fucking swirling in a stuff. circle. I, li I liked all the fight scenes yeah. the way they were filmed. It, it wasn't shaky cam to me. It was just like robotic. it was moving with the action. It I was, liked that. Yeah. I did. It really. I worked thought it for was me. too much. I couldn't focus in on it. It yeah. would. It was good in some spots, but the every one yeah. it was a little too jarring for me. Maybe the, the one thing I will say with um, kind of the uh, the goons that kill his wife, is, oh, it was awkward. Man, the, the, the lead f one was the least intimidating guy I've ever seen. Man, I liked his creepiness, but the, his the, hair, that was only his haircut. That trust me when I say his haircut and his stash yeah. were his creepiness. Yeah, they and his voice him. was creepy too. Uh, he had a creepy vibe to him. The way he talked, I can't yeah. remember his, his cadence, voice. his his kind of the rhythm of his voice. Yeah. Um, but man, the whole gun in the arm thing is so fucking lame. Well, how about when like, he's loading it as he's walking? Oh, that down was the hall. so and then, cheesy. And then after that, yeah, he cocks his fucking bicep. Like that's a that's like you're thinking like at home, and you're like, oh yeah, that'd be cool. And then you actually see it, and you're like, oh no, this is. Well, shit. if you're a fucking <laughs> moron, do you think it'd be cool? I mean, I. I got nervous when I saw him starting loading them up, and I'm like, are we going to do loading up gun arms the rest of this movie? <laughs> um, yeah, that was, that was shit. Something I did like, um, the coughing. I didn't see that coming. Oh, yeah. He's like, <laughs> I'm like, what'd he do to he see sneezed. if he sneezed? What'd he do that oh, see if he jumped? Yeah. He didn't jump. Oh, that's pretty neat. I kind of like that. I hated that. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is this? He it's because I wasn't expecting it. I was like, he sneezed nanobites that go into this guy's brain and kill How cool him. would that be? Yeah, but I'm like, this is, f like, what the fuck is this? Metal Gear Solid logic, man. Yeah, I'm like, this is insanity. Like, why would he ever kill anybody any other way? He'd get with, he kill any anybody easily with the nano. Like, why would you... Use the gun hand at all. Yeah, ever. It's also, like why didn't he just the, kill guy, everybody. the bartender presumably doesn't know he has a gun hand. Why don't he just raise his hand and just blow stupid. him away if he's going to kill him anyways? Stupid. Well, they should have had more. They only brought it up again once. Oh. 
they should have had more purpose for it because I thought it was well, kind of neat. They I try to bring it up cool. towards the end when Stan. But they just yeah. bring it up. It's not like you know. It never. He never does it again. Which it's just ah, that that did not work for me. Yeah. Um, but, well, it's, uh, I wasn't. It was the only thing I wasn't really expecting. I was like, why? Yeah. They did the whole sneeze like he was going to make him jump thing, but he didn't jump, and then we're sitting here awkwardly, you know. Yeah. It was a nice uh, subversion of my expectations, let's yeah. say. Okay. You want to give recommendations before? If you really have nothing to do, see this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it wasn't a terrible ride. Like, I mean, mm. it's pr probably pretty forgettable, some of the scenes. Like, you're not going to remember much from it, but... I wouldn't say it was a waste of time. What else am I doing? Yeah, I'm gonna tell people you can pass on this one. <laughs> I don't think you need to seek it out. It, it's you know, if it's on Netflix, you know, as we've always said, you know, you know, give it a, you know, try. But I, I hate saying that, you know, don't recommend it because of the practical effects. But it's just, it's not good. It's not a good enough movie. What's some practical? What remind me? What practical effects were sort of cool for you? Um, when the guy gets his head like, right. chopped in okay, fucking half. Right. You, and uh, then, uh, we're not spoilers yet, my friend. Yeah. Alright. But, so. uh, yeah. I, cause I'm just, as soon as you say that practical effects, I think of like There's when. There's two um, instances of really good practical effects. I'm thinking of when he like sticks his hand in the dude's eye and the little needle comes out. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Well, there's, there's that, CG you hear that, me though. saying that? No, I realize it's not, when yeah. you say it, that's just what I think of. So I'm right. like, wait, what practical effects? Right. When you hear me say what I just said, you're thinking something completely different than what happened. Thinking Trust fire me. Fire in the sky. <laughs> fire in the sky. It's a movie. Never seen it. Yeah, don't ever watch it. It's shit. Who's in it? Um. Oh God, who is in it? Humphrey Bogart. No, the snake. Peter, like Peter Berg's in it. And, um. Oh God, what's his fucking name? Robert Patrick, the guy who plays the liquid metal guy in T2. Oh yeah, I like. Robert it's about Patrick. an alien abduction that's supposedly based on a true story. Oh, it's so it's total bullshit. Yeah, apparently. But uh, yeah, so you want to go to spoilers? Yeah. Um. Uh, what do you want to spoil? I liked the ending. I could see it coming, yeah. but I mean, at least it's. That felt good. It was weird because we were talking about in the beginning. Ending felt Another good. movie where somebody possesses someone. I'm glad that it's. It's it's the downbeat ending. It's oh no, the evil has won. But it wasn't. <laughs> see, that's the only reason why I'd recommend this is because the ending. It's the only real thing of merit. Yeah, know, other than the two violence. You, you didn't pay 1260 to see it. Yeah. Because you have movie pass. You know, it's like, would you really pay 1260 for this? If you if you actually paid 1260 and then you came out of this, would you be like, oh yeah, someone should pay 13 dollars to see this movie? No, no, yeah. don't pay to see this. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, the the ending is cool. You know, he kills the cop, and I was like, oh yes, See, what she you doesn't guys, prevail. What you guys aren't understanding is the um, machine. Ed could see it coming from the very beginning. It's sort of, it's pretending like it's helping him to yeah. solve the murders. The fact is that it's using him because it needs a human host. I didn't know in the beginning that it would turn out that the computer was the mastermind from the very beginning, but I did I know, know in that fact either, that yeah. it was connected to Draco, yeah. Draco Spider-Man. Right, yes. Yeah. As soon as I saw Draco, I'm like, okay, well, he's the guy who's behind, you know, killing his wife, and as soon as he's like, when did you stem, When did you guess the computer stem was involved? Uh, once he was on the bed. And he had that fake dream? Oh, well, when he when he was on the bed and he said, "Get the fuck out of my head," and he went completely limp, hmm. and then he says, "I'm in control of your body now. We have to do this." I was like, oh, "Okay, it's stem." That's really I knew bad. it. I knew. I didn't know stem. I knew stem. Something was up with stem. I knew something was going to happen when he had. Do you remember? About halfway through, he's laying in bed. He has a dream, and his wife is right there. Right. And he's like, "Bad dream." He can't read his mind. How would he know? But right. then again, he could yeah. read his biorhythms and stuff. But Only if he spoke. He we wouldn't so. have seen it. And it um, wouldn't have been made such a big deal if it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. I knew something was up with STEM. I knew that STEM was involved when that happened. It was going to end up being probably a well, bad guy when that happened. It's definitely about technology being evil. Because yeah. the whole, like, 
all of the cars that are automated, every every single car that's automated, something bad happens with it. That I knew too. Yeah. And so that was a dead giveaway in the beginning. The too. movie is definitely saying, okay, you know, this whole futuristic world that we are headed towards is very is very dangerous, and it's funny because I was just reading an article that these self-driving cars have already killed two people <laughs> in at least two different incidents. Yeah. And people are For, like, oh, uh, you know, compa Uber. yeah, compared to like all the people driving, I'm like, the amount of the, the amount of self-driving cars around the road, there's probably like ten. They've already killed two people. Those are pretty fucking high. There's odds. only ten, like in all <laughs> all places of self-driving cars. Yeah, I, I think there's there's not that many. Okay. So those odds See, that's are real what bad. Surprised me. I figured there'd be at least like just on the road. There's probably a lot more in testing. Yeah, not in, on uh, the road. Okay. No, I'm saying like with people in them that, huh. that have died because of them. Okay. Uh, I know they have like a whole dedicated lane now they're doing or something like that, and um, it's out in California somewhere. They have Silicon Valley, most probably. Likely. Yeah. There you go. But um, guys, just <laughs> FYI, the um, the secret hand that controls the world and fate is moving from financial finances to Silicon Valley. Get ready. Tesla, what's his name? Elon Musk Elon is going to have his hand up your ass in about some years. <laughs> Skynet is going live, motherfuckers. You know they're he's <laughs> disconnect. They're building disconnect. rockets <laughs> that they can launch and reuse, <laughs> and they're also building rockets that they can launch and it lands in the exact yeah. spot where it launched. That's incredible, man. Yeah. Yeah. But, Sky, uh, Skynet's going live, man. <laughs> hey, I'm a enjoy, gray enjoy. kind of guy, oh, aren't yeah. you? Isn't it? Why are people are people being named gray a lot more? I feel like in uh, movies I've seen a lot like more gray. Fifty grays. Shades of Gray. Is that why? Well, the name main character's name was Gray. Really? Oh, yes. Uh, His wife's name care. was something weird. Anna. Arya. Asha. Yeah, something like that. Asha. 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 His mom was in the film. She was terrible as well. Yeah, not good. Pretty the, much everybody was terrible. Essentially, what this movie is is was it's. A revenge, mo a classic '70s revenge movie in 2148. Was that the actual date? I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> and I don't think they ever give. No, a date. they don't give you a date. I don't yeah. think. But it's just, it doesn't know what it's doing. It doesn't know what it wants to do. There's not enough focus. I just, I just wish it. I wish it got right to fucking stem. Like cut out all that shit at the beginning. Just fucking 90 minute action we've seen, movie. Yeah, we've just seen the same nonstop. fucking romance bullshit. A yeah. thousand times before, and you're doing it probably as bad as anybody else I've seen do it. Yeah. I mean, I get, you know, they're trying to have some world building with, you know, the technology in the world, which did look cool to me, yeah. but it's just like, man, get to the fucking action. Give us something. Give me yeah. action, you know? Any other spoilers you want to get into? Anything else you were, you know, sort of <sighs> thinking about? I mean, you know, yeah. I liked I liked the action when it, when it did happen. I did as well. The, the two instances of practical effects, like when the guy gets his fucking head blown they off. They were pretty. They were pretty incredible. When that guy gets his head blown off by the hand, the shotgun hand, I was like, that was awesome. And man, like everybody in the theater, when that dude got his head ripped in half by that uh, butcher knife, everybody in the theater was fucking just yelling. Whoa! It was great. It was fucking fantastic. That's the difference between CGI and practical. It makes you fucking feel something. Yeah. You feel it's it. It's there. It's you know? actually there. And even the surgery scenes, like when they're cutting open his spine and, and they're That was kind planting. of interesting. They, they, they sort good. of lingered on it for it a little good. bit, and I like that. I they didn't that. Yeah. They didn't shy away from that. Yeah. That's, See, that's the thing. There's really some nice touches to this, which yeah. make me kind of disappointed. Like, I had I had heard nothing about it. I didn't know it existed until, like, two days ago. Until I told you about it? <laughs> yeah. He didn't even really tell me about it. He just said... Hey, you want to go see this movie? <laughs> All right, I'm not doing nothing. I had no expectations, so at the beginning I was very, I was very uh, sour. Let's say. Yeah, it's. Uh, I I was so bummed out at the beginning. I was like, oh fuck, man. The highs were high, but there were no. They weren't. They didn't. It was like a roller coaster where like they're you're on a down. flat line for the a first mile. thirty minutes. Yeah. 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 The, oh, uh, did you notice the saw clown at the hacker's place? No, I didn't. It I was didn't. Uh, graffitied on the wall. It said scrape. I thought it said scrap at first. Oh, that would have yeah. made sense because, you know, he's a quadriplegic. Yeah. Um, 
there was something about the hacker I wanted to remember. I didn't. Yeah, you, as soon as she came out of the movie, you were like, oh, what, does she remind you of, like, maybe the Asian chicks from other movies or something like that? No, I don't think so. There's something was, about How did you feel about the VR people? I thought it was so fucking stupid. Like, give me a break. They're all fucking wandering around. It's like, get out of here. It Weeks was, they're standing up around there without sleep. Yeah, Come on. It was pretty the lame. Fuck out. There should be well, shit all the over the floor. It's the future. They could give them yeah. diuretics. I don't think diuretics is what you want to not shit and stay awake. But, you know, I can give them something. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that was ridiculous. They didn't dwell on it. Well, they, they, they bring... The whole point of that scene is for the end of it. Of the movie yeah. when he when his brain snaps, yeah, I remember that. And she's saying, you know, oh, some people would rather be, um, you know, in a dream world than the real world. And he says, I don't understand why real anybody world is would. painful. Yeah, and he's like, I don't understand why anyone would want to do that. And then he does at the end. Did so, you realize when um he was fighting at the end, fighting his mind at the end, that fighting his mind would lead to that? No, I, I didn't think that that was gonna that his brain was gonna snap and that he was gonna take over. He said it though. Didn't, uh, he brings it up that he says, like... If you fight me, your mind will break. Well, once he says that, yeah, then I go, okay. He but wants before, his mind to break? But, like, beforehand, I didn't think, oh, his mind's going to completely be able to break take and control Stem's going to take over. Hmm. I honestly thought the ending of this movie was he's going to be fighting with Stem with the gun in his hand. Hmm. And he was going to be crying in front of the police officer. And, and then just shoot himself, himself right in the head. That's the way I thought it was going to happen. That would earn to our rating. Other than that, this just felt so PG-13. Like Minus the, the guy two gets violence. his fucking head blown off uh, from the FYI, surgery scenes. for you and for the, <laughs> for the uh, fans, I, I'm well aware of the scenes. Okay? <laughs> I'm just speaking in general of the film. Yeah, I mean, when it starts off, I'm like, yeah, this is a PG-13 movie. This is shit. <laughs> Were there any other... Uh, I hated... There was this one time when... Um, what's his... Right after he was at the Hackers, he came back online, he... You know, does the ninja karate knock himself yeah. up? The cam as he's fighting, the camera goes in a circle two, three times. Did you like that one? I, I honestly, I liked all the, the scenes. That all one the really action scenes. Really. I can't see. Like, it's cool the camera swirling, it's motion, it's keeping me, you know, getting me a little adrenaline pumping. But I can't see what's happening. So yeah, I could keep track of it all for me because it was a lot of it was all wide shots for the most part the rest of it and i could flips, i'm just speaking of one specific scene when he was flipping in the uh the bathroom when he did the flip and the camera was swirling around and everything maybe I can't yeah remember that one was one. maybe i guess you'd say disorienting and i definitely can understand people like being like okay this is way too this is way too shaky with him punching and the camera moving with that punch and all that um, I'm down. I can get with that, but it's just it was too much of it. Yeah, I guess if you didn't like the church scene in Kingsman, which has that kind of frantic, I kind thought of it was okay. Cut, uh, but, thing, it, it but it didn't blow me away. I thought it was. Well, okay. it didn't. It didn't blow me away either. But when the action was happening, I was like, oh yeah, I'm having fun. I'm actually enjoying this. And uh, I did like Stem, the guy who voiced Stem. I thought. Who he, uh, do you know who voiced him? No idea no idea but um, it's probably somebody super you've heard a thousand times probably yeah think of it. i did like stem and and you know i did i did like stem that. was stem the best part of this movie yeah probably yeah. that and the practical yeah. effects the much. entire time they tried to they were doing like sort of quippy jokes the crowd behind us was like laughing i'm like a lot of people were laughing they were yeah. sort of it the i only... want to say cringy but it just wasn't Really yeah, funny it to wasn't, me, you know? No, the the one line I really did love, which you were just nothing at, was the that you thought I was an invalid or a quadriplegic, and now I'm actually a fucking ninja. <laughs> I love that fucking line. Didn't sway but, me. <laughs> loved mm, it. Didn't do anything for Absolutely me. Absolutely loved it. I loved when um, the cop goes to cuff him, and immediately, <laughs> and then she just flips her in the air, the air like, rise like a goddamn. She probably hits the ceiling. Like a goddamn dandelion floating <laughs> through the Rag air. Ragdoll. Ragdolls to yeah. the air. The rains come to wash away the sick, yeah. the meek, the tireless. We are upgraded. They are weak. <laughs> well, it's funny. They didn't bring that up enough this, for it to really be impactful. This movie was originally called Stem, which makes more sense. Yeah, but would it really have made much of a difference for you if it was? No, I'm saying like because of. I guess they, the marketing team thought, ah, oh, nobody wants to hear the word Stem in its title. Yeah, but upgrade is even more generic than that. I guess so. Upgrade, uh, when you hear the term upgrade and you saw the preview, what, what did you think? Um... Livingston and I, um... Well, I thought it was going to be very much like a Terminator-esque kind of a movie. 
So we needed more revenge. Needed yeah. either more revenge Way more or, action. or more harder sci-fi, maybe? Maybe sort of something to tie it all together? Some sort and it's, of it's crazy that just not all the Tie it all together other than the uh, digital um, is bad. Yeah. Not, and not all the dust are really satisfying. Like the main villain, um, well, the pseudo main villain. Of the yeah. goon squad. You figure they're going to save, they're going to give him kill. the best one. Just yeah. lame fucking kill. You know? So. The fight was kind of cool, though. Yeah. Yeah, it was okay. The two are like robotic androids, essentially, and they're fighting each other. It was cool. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of almost the Matrix when he first kind of yeah, a starts bit. learning. They were like doing that same, everything. I bet they were doing that same sort of fighting style. Because yeah. it looked very similar to me. The sort of... A lot of arm yeah. and elbow like stuff. One, like you know when, I mean? when Neo wakes up, when he's been shot. It reminded me of Ip Man a mm -hmm. lot. The sort of fighting he would do in that. Just when he was using just his hands. It would just sort of be just knock hand kind away. Of kung fu, yeah. Yeah. Like I say, it really reminded me of uh, The Matrix. When, once Neo wakes up after being shot in the, uh, in the Matrix. Sort of, and the agents the come at him. Man. And he's just like looking up like this and just grabbing all the agents and stuff. That was but, a lot uh, of the action for our main character until that fight with like, the pseudo fuck. villain Archer. Which that I I did like when Stem first did take him over, when he's like, "Oh, Stem, take over!" and the fight scene, and he's like commentating. Yeah, that was fun. That was interesting. <laughs> in the was kitchen, cool. he's like, "Oh, Stem, he's got a knife." He's like, "Oh, fuck!" He's stabbing him. That was and great. then he proceeds to take the knife. I he just says to Stem. It reminds me a lot of an episode of Rick and Morty where uh, Summer is in the car. She's waiting for Rick and Morty to come back from somewhere. And Rick's just like, keep Summer safe to the car. So the first guy comes up, car kills him immediately. Don't kill anybody. Next guy comes up, makes him a paraplegic. Next guy comes up, don't hurt anyone physically. Makes what? his dead son, like, be cloned. This and talk to him, Daddy, let, leave the car alone. Is this from the third season? No, I think it's uh, the second. Uh, Stephen Colbert was a guest star. Yeah. It reminded me a lot of that. Where were we just talking about? I'm sorry I just cut you off. I'm talking about that kitchen fight, I think. But... Yes, pardon me. He says to Stem, stop him. So what does Stem do? He takes over. He uh, takes a butcher knife, grabs both ends, and proceeds to ram it across <laughs> from his mouth <laughs> to his... Uh, his spinal cord? <laughs> the back it? of his head. Yeah, the back of his and head at the very him least. wide open. Man, that looked good. Holy shit, did it look good. Very, very satisfying. I wow. wish I wish that sort of comeuppance was saved for... The main villain. Fink. Frank? He yeah, is. something like that. It's very short. Like Fink. Have you ever seen him in anything else? Uh, I did probably have. Did the mustache have... and hair throw you off? <laughs> it really sold me on the creepiness of him. Yeah. But uh, you want to do final ratings? Yeah, I'd say it's a five. Yeah. The I, ultimate, because there was some good, see, an mm. average movie where I'm not going to remember anything. That, yeah. That'd be a five, two, or four. Yeah, th this but this, it had some nice stuff in it, mm -hmm. but it also had a lot of shit in it. Yeah, this started off for me at like a three. I was like, oh, yeah. Jesus, this is oh, fucking yeah. terrible. And then, uh, yeah, I'd say it's about a five. It's It's average, you know. You know, there's a lot better stuff um, in this, you know, wheelhouse that you could see instead of this. So yeah. you can avoid it, pass it. What some? Um, what? What do you think are some better sort of exploitation, revenge, or ultra violent films? Um. Well, I could do. Uh, you are not in control. I would. I would definitely say Crank. Uh, with Jason I still Statham. Seen it. That's an example of a movie that gets right to the fucking point and is nonstop action. Is the sort of weird, shitty camera and sort of shakiness too much? No, though? no, I I dig it. I really like the first one. It's it's a real simple premise. <laughs> Jason Statham's a hitman. Uh, the uh, this crime syndicate gave him a Beijing cocktail, which means he's gonna die. There's nothing I like he that can name. do. Beijing cocktail. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing he can do, and he's just got to stay alive enough, alive long enough to kill the motherfuckers that poisoned him, <laughs> and that's the plot. Ephraim, uh, Ephraim Ramirez is in it as well, right? Yeah, the, the guy who played Pedro in Napoleon Dynamite's in it. Um, 
and uh, yeah, a lot of uh, no names. But it's a Amy Smart's in it from Road Trip, and uh, yeah, you know, you know, I do. You don't see enough of her. I've always no, thought she was a very like cute her. young woman. Yeah, it's uh, just pure exploitation, schlock craziness. It's fucking madness. And it's a lot of fun. I'm pissed I asked you that because I can't think of any. Um, the first one that comes to mind, um, original, I spit on your grave. No, I'm not. I. How about this? We'll go with. Um, it is an exploitation. Movie, it's right? not. I don't think it's terrible, but it's not great. It's no, I'm just. I, I've, I've told you before. I hate re rape revenge movies. Yeah. It's so rapey. Just like how Last House on the Left. So That's exactly what I was going going yeah. for. Last House on the Left. Wes Craven's anti-violence exploitation <laughs> film. A young girl and her friend go to the city for a rock show. It's the 60s or 70s. So, of course, we know New York City. Did I say it was New York City? Oh, wait. It's the Big Apple gang. And the Big Apple will take a bite out of you in the 70s and 60s. So as soon as they get there, they are immediately abducted, raped, and murdered. The gang proceeds to... Where are they going? Why are they going to her house? Anyways, they um, end, up, <laughs> end up at the parents' house. And the parents discover that they may have had something to do with the rape and murder of their daughter. Yeah. And chaos ensues. Shit goes south. Real quick. Yeah. <laughs> real fast. Yeah. It could not have gone any worse, any quicker, yeah. one could say. Not a big fan? It's just the whole uh, rapey it's, thing? It's just so rapey. Okay. I just, I'm, I mean... Uh, Makes you uncomfortable, you don't like it, you don't yeah, like it. Yeah, I, I just, I really don't like rape in movies. It's For the most really part, when it's awkward. a movie, when it's a show, when it's a documentary, I can look past almost anything. I've seen, yeah. like, tons of those Auschwitz documentaries where you see the guys who are, like, 40 pounds. You know what I mean? Like, that yeah. shit's... And they're all, you see a pile of 40-pound guys. Like, right. it's pretty deplorable shit. But it just... I don't know. Yeah. I could just look past it. I'm trying to learn about it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Any so, others? Yeah, uh, I'd go with another, well, I mean, I'd go with the current one that came out, uh, you know, a little while ago. It was called uh, Green Room. Mm, I still haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's fucking fantastic. Another really just simple setup, which is what, you know, it's really good for exploitation movies, but you just gotta... because well, you can't, you can't mire in fucking well, it's bullshit. About, it's about getting point. into the fucking yeah. action. That's what and, the, an exploitation uh, movie is. Violence. Yeah. And exploitation. That, exactly. And that's what's so good about Green Room. It's it's just a real simple premise. Patrick Stewart's in it, right? Yes. He plays the villain. Um, it's uh, it's about this um, uh, punk rock band. You know, they don't have a lot of money. They got a shitty van. They're trying to get, you know, some gigs. And a friend of theirs has got a gig for them. Problem is, it's at a skinhead bar. And Usually not an issue. <laughs> Yeah, and so they play the, they play the show, and um, they decide to play a little, uh, a little ditty called "Nazi Punks Fuck Off." <laughs> Good call, SJWs. <Yeah. laughs> Which is, uh, is you're not punching a lot of Nazis now, are you? It's a classic uh, Dead Kennedy song that they're covering, but um, yeah, uh, they uh, they play that song, and and some of the uh, the skinheads in that bar aren't too pleased. Let's just say. As the, but, you would um, figure they wouldn't be. The uh, the band is like, all right, you know, let's get the fuck out of here. So they go back to the green room. And, well, someone gets murdered and... It's a skinhead bar. The green room's <laughs> not a great place to <laughs> escape to. Well, they, they go there just to get their kind of shit and go, get their, you know, equipment. Yeah. And, well, they see, they see a murder take place. And then the movie ensues, and Patrick Stewart is like, well, you guys can't leave here. <laughs> you guys can't leave. Yeah. What movie's and, that from? Bronx know. Tale. Bronx Tale. Now's you can't sleeves. Just got released on Blu-ray in Australia. Region free. It's not a bad movie if you pretty haven't good. seen Bronx Tale. It's good. Yeah, Maybe it's a little good. too heavy-handed, but it's, no, yeah, it's a good movie. But, uh, yeah, Green Room's fucking incredible. Great villains. Um just the violence is brutal and it's also like realistic in the way that um you know people are gonna make mistakes they're gonna fuck up these guys aren't action heroes they're just regular fucking kids yeah. in a punk band grounded and, uh, it's it, i mean it is really sad though because anton yelchin 
The uh, star. Yeah, he has passed away, sadly. And he was right in the fucking prime of his career. And he's he's fantastic in it. And this girl, um, I'm blanking on her name. Uh, no, Igamon Poops. Uh, Poops. Imogen. Imogen. Imogen Poots. Imogen Poots. Yeah. I, uh, she's, for many years, yeah. I saw her name and I would pronounce it Imogen. <laughs> yeah. She's she's fucking great in the movie, too. So that would that'd be uh, like a newer exploitation movie I would really highly recommend. I saw that here, actually. I fucking loved it. I can't think of any other two that I, besides the two I mentioned. So I'm going to go with Total Recall just because there's a lot of good violence and practical <laughs> effects. I, I literally just ordered that on Amazon. It was on I sale. A, I, got a, I bought a Blu-ray at like Walmart or something for five bucks like years ago. I hope you got the good version with the transfer. Probably not if it was at Walmart Does for five bucks. Does it say mind-bending edition on the cover? Mm, I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah. Probably not. It depends on which one you have. But First to was real bad. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Paul Verhoeven, probably their <laughs> best. Did they ever team up for anything? I'm thinking of Running Man. It wasn't Paul Verhoeven, no. but it really reminded me of him. No. Uh, the best, probably one of the better action movies of the 80s. Definitely one of the best <laughs> sci-fi action movies of the 80s. Best movie directed in the 80s, except it was directed in the 90s. <laughs> it's from the 90s? Yeah. It's from When's like, it from? It's from like 91. Oh, okay. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. It's close enough. I was a, uh, I was uh, in an in infantile stage at that point, so anything from then before is 80s for me. God, I'll tell you what, man. I, I know you want to talk about the movie, but man, Sharon Stone in that movie, holy fuck is she hot yeah she's how so about i got hot. one more expo exploitation Woo! movie for you how about the oh yeah total not, recall not i'll really finish describing movie, it but, uh, a violence movie yeah um a man uh normal guy arnold schwarzenegger besides the fact he's like you know a giant he-man in real life <laughs> and also can't really speak english that well but anyways besides that <laughs> He uh, wakes up one day, he's always had these fantasies about going to Mars. It's the future, it's not a problem, you just uh, hop in a skip away, you know? Can't afford it, so he decides, I'm going to go to this place called Recall. And what does Recall do? They uh, implant memories in your brain. You go down for an hour, half hour, they put you under. <coughs> put the memory in. And then you went to Mars for two weeks. Maybe even had a super cool action spy adventure. Mm -hmm. Flash forward, Doug wakes up in a taxi. And he finds himself in the middle of an action spy adventure. But yeah. is it a part of his implant or is it really yeah, happening? Yeah. Now for my real exploitation pick. Paul Verhoeven's Basic Instinct. Yeah. Also a much better... Definitely. Sharon Stone movie. Definitely a if you're looking for Sharon movie. Stone. For sure, yeah. It um it's a murder mystery that's just riddled with sex and lesbians and <laughs> drugs All the things and, you love. and George Dezunza. Yeah. I've never been sure if that's really how you say his name. But somebody will let me know in the you'll, comments. I'll never I'm sure. look at Ice Picks the same way again. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's one of those movies where it they it sort of played like a straightforward murder mystery, but it's not. You gotta really look on look online what it's what's really going on, because it's sort of like there's two endings. One is you're supposed to, one is real supposedly, one is fake supposedly. So you gotta really yeah. watch it a few oh, times wow. to sort of so you know get a good interpretation, good impression of it. It's good. Yeah. Michael Douglas, when he was really good, is in it. But, you know, he's generally pretty good in all his movies, right? Michael Douglas? Yeah, I'm, I'm hot and cold on Michael Douglas. He can be bad. Ant-Man, he was not great. Yeah, he was fine in Ant-Man. It's just, I don't know, a lot of his movies are kind of whatever to me. Nah. I haven't seen all of them or a lot of them, but... It just feels like he's, like, always in some business suit and everything. Yeah. You know, he's great in Fatal Attraction, you know? The Ghosts in the Darkness. I love that movie. I really do. I fucking love I haven't it. seen it in a while. Bill Kilmer's accent. His accent, his accent too Africa much? Africa with the lions. That, I, God, I wish that was on Blu-ray. I have it on DVD somewhere. I haven't rewatched it in years. But Me too. I, I, I always fucking love it. That's that another record. Not really an exploitation or yeah, violence movie, but it's a movie. solid movie, I guess. Yeah. Is Val Kilmer's accent too much? Do you remember? I... Uh, I think the last time I saw it was on DVD. He's either Irish, Scottish, or English, but nonetheless... 
Uh, any other suggestions, ratings, or rants? Uh, well, I mean, since you were kind of blanking on some exploitation movies, I, I could give a couple old ones for people. Yeah, go nuts. Um, I'd go with uh, Coffee, which is uh, a classic oh, Jack Hill movie. There's Pam Greer in it, Pam right? Pam Greer. Uh, you, can, you see how sexy she is in oh Jackie Brown. God. You can only imagine her. She was in, in her twenties, in her thirties, oh, even. God they, damn. Yeah, she was. She was fucking fine. And they made four films together. Uh, they made uh, the Big Bird Cage, the Big Dollhouse, Coffee, and Foxy Brown together. And he was just a classic um, exploitation director. But Coffee, she plays a nurse who doesn't take uh, too kindly to you know the drug, uh, the drug dealing smut on the streets. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> oh boy! And uh, basically, her uh, her sister ODs, and she decides to take the law in her own hands. You know, I am the law. You're gonna deal those drugs, well, I'm gonna deal you a double. I am the law, sugar. She's like, if you're gonna deal those drugs, well, I'm gonna deal you a double barrel shotgun to the fucking dome. <laughs> I love Pam Greer. She's, she's so great. She's just, it's fantastic. Even in goddamn Escape from L.A., yeah. I love Pam Greer. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I actually like Escape from L.A. more than Escape from New York. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> it's just more fun. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I would I would highly recommend Coffee. It's just classic exploitation. Uh, and the other one I would recommend is uh, Rolling Thunder. It's, uh, it's about tanks? No, no, no. It's about um, a Vietnam war vet who has come home. He's lost his hand. Is he in a wheelchair? No, he's not. Jerry, you, you have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I know, I'm just guessing. <laughs> it's um, basically it, it's it's simple. He's come home. He uh, obviously he's not welcomed. Vietnam vets were not welcomed, and uh, there's a home invasion. His wife gets killed, and uh, basically he and his old war buddy Tommy Lee Jones decide to go on a quest to kill all Who's these starters. Uh, William Devine. Okay. You, uh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know his name, but as soon as I've you heard saw his space, name, yeah. Was he in uh, the, the one where is it safe with Lawrence Olivier, where he was a Nazi? I don't, I don't know. I'd have to IMDb him. Yeah. But he's just, he's got one of those faces where it's like, as soon as you see his face, you're like, oh, if it's it was that the guy. '60s or '70s, he was like 70s. in a third of the movies. The '70s. Yeah. This was like his only starring role, and yeah. uh, Paul Schrader uh, wrote the script for it, who did Taxi Driver. And there's a lot of similarities to Taxi Driver, but it's just classic exploitation of these Vietnam vets who they've come back and they don't feel kind of at home, you know, and they don't really understand and they can't really, you know, yeah. they can't really fit in. And they just, you know, they want to they wanna kill these motherfuckers. And, you know, Tommy Lee That's Jones... That's what they know, man. Tommy Lee Jones is a family, but he jumps at the chance to go on another mission, you know? Well, that's what happens, like, um... That's how, like, biker gangs got started. Like, they came back yeah. from wars, and it's like they missed the com camaraderie. Like, you're fucking fighting for your life every fucking day, and then you come home, and you're just sitting here. It's a great scene in a biker bar, actually, in the movie. <laughs> now yous isn't... Now yous can't leave. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that that would be definitely a classic one from the 70s that I would, I would recommend for people. That's a really good A lot watch. of bars. A lot of Nazi and biker bar talk tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, gang. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>